Hey guys, it's Mike coming back with part two of my Hank Greenberg collection. I uh, wasn't planning on doing it this weekend after just doing part one the other day, but I've got some free time, so I thought well, now would be a good time to continue. Uh, I covered the pre-card years from his career from 1930 to 1933, his rookie year last video. Um, and this is on, I'm going to go over 1934, 1935 this time. Uh, in 1933, Hank was a rookie. Uh, he had 12 home runs and had, it says, 85 RBIs. So he had a good solid rookie year. Batted 301. The Tigers finished, I think, a few games under 500. So they had a mediocre year that year. They did have another Hall of Famer on the team, uh, Charlie Gehringer, one of the best second basemen to ever play. But the key for the Tigers in Hank's second year, 1934, was getting two players. Uh, one was Goose Goslin. Um, uh, Goslin came over from the Washington Senators after, I think, the World Series they played in in 1933. And the key or even more key pickup was they got Mickey Cochran from the Philadelphia team. Uh, Mickey had been a part of the pennants they won from, like, I think it was 29 to 31. Uh, he was a catcher, one of the best catchers, if not the best catcher in the game at the time. Good hitter. But a strong competitor, and he really brought a sense of winning to the team when he came over in 1934. So in 1934, the Tigers, um, they won the pennant. I think it was their first one in 25 years. They went to the World Series, played the Cardinals, and they lost in seven games in that series. That was a Cardinals famous gas house game team. Uh, and uh, it was a great World Series, uh, but they did lose in seven games. But it would set up for an even better 1935 for them. So over in 34, uh, I showed you in the last video the picture of the possible Warsh Cigar 1933 card for Hank. If that is what it is, that would be his first card appearance. Uh, though that was... That's still under debate by some people. In 1934, he had his true rookie release. And that was a 1934 Gaudi. Uh, I have one graded SGC. I got a 7. I was glad to pick this up a year or two ago before prices went crazy. I don't think I could do it now. But it's a beauty. Pardon the glare. But uh, just a beautiful card. Uh, other ones that could be considered rookie cards, if that Warsh doesn't really exist, is this team issue card. And the standard catalog is listed as the Deti Detroit Tigers team card. Uh, it was a whole set of Tigers that they did. But it was later found out to be put out by a Detroit company called Anis Spurs. That's A-N-I-S-F-U-R-S. They were a big sponsor of the Tigers at the time in 1934 and 35. And they released this postcard size issue. And this is the Hank one. Beautiful card. Got this one. It's graded a four by SGC. A beautiful card. The whole set is really nice. They do pop up. Uh, they hang not so much anymore, just because it's by far the most popular one. Uh, there is the batter up cards, uh, which are very nice. Most people are aware of those. They were issued in 34 to 36. Now the hang card uh, is issued in the first batch, so it would be considered a rookie card. Uh, Hank's batter up card, as far as I know, this comes in four colors. It comes in blue, black, a pinkish color, and a brown. Um, I recently did a trade with my good friend Sean Tiford, and uh, I got a couple upgrades for that set. 
And I haven't sent these off to SGC as I'm not doing anything with SGC until things calm down a bit. Uh, but this, is, this is the brown issue. It's uh, you know BG four uh, three forty. And this is the pink in a 4.5 or 55. I still miss these green label, the old 100 point scale. The pink version. And the two I traded for Sean, I got a PSA 2.5 on the black issue. And the best condition one I got is the blue I got from you. It's in the near mint seven. Really nice card. I'm gonna try to get that to cross over to SGC. We'll see what happens. Uh, but these were issued um, over a period of three years. But Hanks was list was made in the first year. I think it was one of the first. The first 80 cards were made that in 34, and this is number 57 in the set. Um, the other one that does exist, but I'll probably never see, and I printed it off of the web. Uh, was, this is an interesting story I'll go over real quick. They're Al Demery, I believe is how you pronounce it, cards. They're die cuts. This is a picture of Hank's card. This is the only, this picture represents the only one in existence known. Uh, the set's been around and known about for quite a while, but it was um, in 2009, a Wisconsin man found his father's box of baseball cards he kept under his bed before he died. And uh, this was one of the that Al Demery's in it. It's the only Hank Greenberg known to exist. So it's in a private collection now. I, I assume the person will never sell it. But that means there should be other ones out there. So maybe one day. Um, the interesting thing about this is that it was made by the Dietz Candy Company in Chicago. Um, and later it was found out to be that the same company, another company that had the same address as Dietz was the Overland Ca Candy Company. And you'll see that in my next video because they made the Overland Candy wrappers from 1936 up to at least 41. And all of those companies that have these Chicago addresses I found, including Overland and Dietz, amongst others, was owned by a guy named Saul Leaf. L-E-A-F, and yes, he was the precursor to Leaf cards. Later on in the 40s, maybe, or 50s, I can't remember, before he made more baseball cards and football cards. That's a nice story. But these cards were found in 2009, and there's still not been another one found since then with Hank on it. So, very cool. And let's see here. That would be all the cards that were issued in 1934. For Hank, um, in 1930, as I said, they lost in the World Series in seven games to the Cardinals. They came back in 35, won the pennant again, and um, oh, I did want to show you one other thing. I did have an autograph. This is one of the first cuts I ever got. Uh, on the back of it, the gentleman said it was signed in about 1932. Now, based on that signature I showed you on the Texas League program, I'd say this is probably 33, 34, probably his first year at the Tigers and maybe second year. This is one of the best cuts I ever have seen on Hank. Uh, one of the earliest, that's for sure. If I can get the focus here. It's, it's, it's kind of small for him and it's very it's very or it's not loopy or drawn out at all from writing it a bunch of times. You can tell it's very compact. As he really wanted to make a nice clean signature. It's small and detailed. And before he they won the World Series in set 35, and he got all the autographs requested. We got a little bit more drawn out and a little 
wouldn't say sloppy. He's never really had too much of a sloppy uh, signature, but that's very compact and tight for him. That's an SGC slab. And a couple other things I have just to accentuate the collection. Now, if anybody collects vintage, I think they are to look into this. These are really fun. I don't have any programs to show, but I got a couple original photos. This is a photo of Hank from 1934 sliding into second base against the Yankees, uh, dated August 17, 1934. And at the time, this went a long way to deciding who's going to win the pennant that year. But I love these photos, these original photos. That even though they have went up in price now, they're even getting pricier to find. But uh, a nice picture of Hank against the Yankees sliding into second base. And I got one more 1934 photo. This is actually from the World Series against the Cardinals. This is uh, game four of the World Series, and the Tigers won 10 to 4. Even the series at two, uh, dated October 6, 1934. And it shows Hank at first base with Pepper Martin for the Cardinals. They were trying to pick him off, and that's him getting back to first base before the throw. So. I love stuff like this, like I said, just to add to the collection to give it more character and depth. These original photos were just really cool. They're dated and stamped by the they're stamped by the company as they put them in. This is it was taken on October 6th. They put it in their collection at the office October 11th. And it's stamped with the photographer who where he worked for and gave the caption that they recommended for putting in the newspaper when they published the photo after the game. So these are really, really cool. And let's see here. Everything else would be 1935. Moving to 1935, uh, after they had the team together, they brought up another big picture from Bo a picture from Beaumont named Schoolboy Row. He was a very tall guy like Hank, very physically imposing, great pitcher. Uh, well, with him and Bridges they had already, and now they had the whole team in place. Um, 1935, they uh, tear, won the pennant, and then won the World Series against the Cubs that year. I believe that was seven games also. The only bad part for Hank was that he broke his arm, or his wrist, I should say, I believe, sliding into home place, plate when he was trying to score a blink, of, I believe, from second on his a hit. But I have the picture, and I'm going to show you that. So he left the series after game two. So he was the MVP of the league that year, and they won the World Series. But it was a bit bittersweet because he was not part of the series after game two of the World Series. So it's his first MVP, um, and in his MVP year, he hits, uh, let's see here, he had 35, 36 home runs, 168 RBIs, and he batted 328, and he finished first in the MVP voting that year. So that was his first of two MVPs. He won again in 1940. So... Uh, 1935 issues, we have the Diamond Stars. You know, they were issued from 1934 through 1936. Hank was issued the second year, 1935. And uh, this is his regular issue card, spelled correctly. The Diamond Stars were a very popular set. I'm sure most of you all have seen these. If you watch Brian's videos, he's got 13 of them, I think, now. I'm, I've only got three. I got the uh, the uh, regular issue here, number five. And I've got the error edition stuff, Greenberg, B-U-R-G, number five also. 
Try to get it to focus here. I need the camera, but it's a beautiful card. And on this one, I'll go ahead and show it since I got it. I do have an autographed version of this card, PSA DNA. Signed, very nice condition card. Um, thought about getting the card graded, but I just got it authenticated, the autograph. You can see at the bottom there. Beautiful car. So that was from 35. And let's see here. Also in his MVP year, he had issued the George Burke stamp. These are really, really hard to come by. There's a set on eBay right now, but they went like $1,200 for the whole set. And Hank, of course, is the key card. But uh, this is the 1935 George Burke. It's a photo stamp. Trying to get it's got Hank Burke, Hank Greenberg above his name. These are small, about the size, a little bit bigger than a postage stamp. But they're photo stamps and they're really, really nice. This one's graded a one, but you never see them in, I've only seen a handful and they're never in high grade. And let's see here. Also, we've got the 1935 Gaudi 4 and 1s. Uh, there's two of them. It's had two different backs. Uh, this is a this is the I think the 8F version. And that just means the puzzle pieces that are on the back of the card you can put together and make a puzzle. This is a five. And you can see Hank there. This card also has Pete Fox, uh, Walker, and Schoolboy Row on. Nice to have Geringer, but this one's in a five. And then the 9F version is this one here. It's the same picture on the front. They have puzzle pieces on the back. This has got Hudlin on the back. And it's a picture of a, a team. This one's a five also, the 9F. And this one here is a Dodgers card that, uh, not the front so much, I'm interested in. This is what it looks like. But the back of it has a Detroit Tigers puzzle, and guess who's on the back? Little Hank there. I tried to get him to put the back as the front of the card, and they wouldn't do that, so... Uh, thanks to Sean, I realized that there is a Boston Red Sox team card with Joe Cronin on it that has the same puzzle piece on the back. So hopefully eventually I'll get that one. And then also there's a couple other items. One is this monster that Brian has showed you on no, a couple of times. The 1935 Gaudi Premium R3092, number 12, Hank. Okay. And it's so big that see, the only company that would slab it is Beckett. So this is one, my one Beckett slab. And it's a four. And it is a monster. Uh, I hope maybe one day I can get it switched over to something smaller, maybe a PSA. Or... Actually, I'd look in to see if they would do that. I'm not for sure. But those are, they, you see those occasionally, but... Uh, they are, they are pretty monstrous. Uh, and the other one that was issued was issued by the Detroit Free Press, the newspaper. Uh, in the newspaper in Detroit, in, on May 12, 1935, they had a coupon. And you could exchange these 
I see these coupons for these pictures of the whole team that were issued. Uh, probably to commemorate the pennant again. This is the Hank one. They're pretty large. They're like, I don't know, probably eight and a half by 11, something like that. This guy's name at the bottom. This one's in really nice shape. But the one on the back's not in quite as good a shape. But if you will look at the bottom here, he's got a period signature that is probably from about that time period. And if I can get it to focus, of course. Uh, I believe it says to Ruth. To Ruth with best best wishes, Hank Greenberg. And based on the signatures I've showed you before, and there we go. To Ruth with best best wishes, Hank Greenberg. Looks like to me it was probably signed about 1935. Maybe 36. As you can see, that signature is not quite as tight as it was on that cut I had. So he's getting he's getting used to signing a lot of autographs, I think. Mm -hmm. His autograph changes, and you'll see if I continue this series, you're gonna see how they change he changed his signature quite a bit over the years. Anyway, that is very cool. And I love I love signed cards like the one I showed you for the Diamond Stars, but the best to me is anything signed in period time during the period from he has a player from 33 up or 30 up to 47. Anything signed at that time with his uh, signature that he used during that time is my favorite by far. And a couple more things to show to go along with it. As I mentioned, that Anna Spurs rookie in 1935, Anna Spurs put out this book. It says, Following the Tigers, 1935. Presented by Anna Spurs and radio station WJBK. It's a neat little booklet. It goes over the 1934 season. It was made in 1935. And uh, the Anna Spur that I showed you, made by this company, and nobody knew about it until if someone found a poster years a few years ago, or maybe it's been 10 or 15. That actually has an advertising with all the cards on it for Anna's firm. So, very neat piece there, just to add to the collection. And in 1935, it came out with uh, the Michigan Insurance Company came out with this bi a little folder at, called the Bengal Biographies. There's Nicky Cochran on the cover. And it's got a write up of all the Tigers from 1934. Uh, one of my favorite parts of it is that uh, it says the Tiger infield, known as the Battalion of Death. You don't hear anything like that too much today, where they call like the infielders for the a team the Battalion of Death. But uh, they were a little bit more able to do things back then and nowadays. It's got a really nice picture of things. And all the rest of the infield at the bottom. Yeah, I actually have a few no programs to show you from them. I should get some. But some pictures I collected to go along with it. For some reason, this one is from February of 35 in the off season. And it's a wire photo and it's got Hank climbing up a palm tree. Which I don't know why he's climbing up a palm tree. But I thought it was so ridiculous that uh, I wanted to put it in the collection. I'd like to know what he's climbing up there to get. It looks like he's reaching for something up there. But that was pretty strange, but I got it. And these are neat because these relate to uh, the World Series, particularly Game 2 of the 1935 World Series where Hank had his the wrist broken or arm broken when he slid in the home plate. He actually, you can see it in this picture up here. But first I'm going to show in game two, he hit the home run. Um, 
Let's see, Hank Cross has played after socking a home run in the left field bleachers at Maven Field October 3rd, scoring Charlie Gehringer, who had singled ahead of him. The Tigers beat the Cubs 8-3. to and This is a picture of him crossing home plate. I love stuff like this, as I mentioned before. And then, and it says here, Hank Greenberg, who earlier in the game hit a home run, is pictured being put out at home plate by Gabby Hartnett, cup catcher, when he attempted to score from first base on Pete Fox's single off pitcher, Halloween. Uh, in the seventh inning of the Chicago Cubs, Detroit Tigers' second World Series game at Maven Field, October 3rd. And someone at the, this is a picture of him sliding the home. And you can see a little arrow that has actually been attached to the photo. And they're pointing at his wrist. It's where it got broken at, or his arm then. So that's when he broke his arm or wrist there, sliding into home plate. So I think that's a really cool photo. And uh, this is him. Uh, with a picture taken the next day on October 4th. This is Hank still icing his wrist down after the play. And as you can imagine, he's looking very dejected sitting there on the training table. As he very well by then knows that he's not going to be able to play anymore that year. But he was the MVP that year, of first of two, and he did win the World Series. And then he had some bad news coming in 1936, too. So I hope you enjoyed it. I know this took forever, but um, I'll see if, uh, if you all like it. I'll keep going. I think it's kind of fun to incorporate the story in with the cards. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. If I was wrong about something, let me know. I think I have the gist of it correct. But thanks for watching, those who stuck around. And you all take care and have a great day. And uh, we'll see if we get to part three here. Thank you. Bye-bye.